Okay, so we're on to step six now of the cable selection, and we're going to calculate our R1, R2 value now, which is using this formula we see below here. Okay, so take a note of that formula. Definitely need that one. And here's our two circuits we're working on still. We've still got all of our values inputted in our equation here, which we're satisfied so far, and we've got our cable sizes there. Right, let's move on and have a look at these three tables before we start doing this. Let's understand these. These three tables are all from Appendix I in the on-site guide. You can see the references there highlighted in yellow. You can note them down and get to know where they are, and I'll explain what they mean now. So table I1 is values of resistance per meter, or R1, R2 value per meter, for copper and aluminium conductors at 20 degrees. Okay, so that's the, the value it was tested at, 20 degrees. So we need to bear that in mind. That's why we add a, a, a derating factor, basically. We, we're going to choose a derating factor from here afterwards. We'll do that, though. Let's go through this first. So, for example, here, we had a 1 mil cable, didn't we, on our lighting circuit. And our protective conductor, let's say for our example here, we've got a 1 mil protective conductor, which it usually would be. We'd then use 36.20 as our milliohms per meter value. Okay? And let's go through this table. So, ambient temperature multipliers to add to table I1. So this would be our derating factor. And these are at ambient temperature. So for example, if our ambient temperature was 25 degrees for our, our circuit, our derating factor would be 1.02. Now this table at the bottom is multipliers to be added to table I1, which is this one at the top, to calculate conductor resistance at maximum operating temperature for standard devices. Right. So what we're saying down here is that this table here is going to give us a derating factor for ambient temperatures. Okay, so we've got ambient temperatures, that'll be 35 degrees. So we could calculate that using that as our derating factor. But look down here, it's more important that we know that our cable can work at maximum operating temperatures, isn't it? In the worst case scenario, which is always what we consider when we're doing cable design, okay, circuit design. So we're going to use this table below here to get our derating factor. Right, okay, so let's start by doing this side. Let's do our radial circuit on this side and let's select our milliohms per meter value and get our length and our derating factor and do this side. Okay, so for this side, so we're going to try and find our milliohms per meter value. Okay, we're going to do that. So we know we've got a 2.5 millimeter cable, haven't we? Let's go down here, 2.5 mil, and as a standard, we're going to go for the 1.5 mil protective conductor, which is the standard size we'd have. So 2.5. 1.5 protective conductor, and that's going to be a value of 19.51. You can see that just there, can't we? We'll put a line next to it. So 19.51 is our milliohms per meter value for that circuit. Okay, and then we need to pull out our length, don't we? So our length for this circuit is 20 meters. Okay, perfect. And then the last value we need is our derating factor, don't we? So we need to find out what our derating factor is actually going to be, don't we? So we know that looking at this derating factor down here, if we go down here and we look at this and we go, right, conductor insulation, 70 degree thermoplastic cable. Okay, so what this is saying when it says not incorporated in a cable and not bunched or incorporated in a cable or bunched, it's referring to the protective conductor. So inside your cable, obviously, you've got your neutral and your line and you've got your protect protective conductor. So we're using thermoplastic insulated cable, aren't we? So it's incorporated in the cable, isn't it? Okay. So our derating factor is going to be 1.2. What we're saying is, is the protective conductor is incorporated inside that cable, isn't it? So our derating factor for this is going to be 1.2. So let's just put an F for factor. That's going to be 1.2. Okay, perfect. So let's put this into, our, into this value now and let's work this out. So our R1, R2 is going to be, so R1 plus R2 value for this circuit is going to be equal to our derating factor multiplied by our length multiplied by our milliohms per meter value. So let's go for it like this. Let's go for 19.51 multiplied by 20 multiplied by 1.2 and then all of that we're going to divide by 1000. And that's going to give us a value of 0 0.46 and what we're calculating our R1 R2 which is a resistance value so it's going to be in ohms isn't it 
Okay, so that's that side done. So we've got our R1, R2 value for this side, for that circuit. Let's do our lighting circuit exactly the same way. So let's pull out of this table our milliohms per meter value for this circuit. So we're using a 70 degree flat twin and earth copper cable. And same as this side, that means that the protective conductor is going to be incorporated in this cable, doesn't it? So we'll get that down here after. But let's get our milliohms per meter value first. So what have we got? We've got a 1.1 a one mil cable. Here we go, 1 mil. And we've got a 1 mil protective conductor as standard with a 1 mil. And that's going to mean our milliohms per meter value for this lighting circuit is going to be 36.20. So let's put that here. 36.20. Right, okay. And let's get the length of our circuit out of here because we need that, don't we? Length of our circuit is going to be 45 meters. Okay, fine. And then last thing we need, don't we? We need to pull out of here now our last bit of information, which is our factor. Okay, so same again. We're going to choose the worst case scenario, aren't we, like we've been discussing. So we're going to come down here again, same type of cable, incorporated in the cable or bunched, our protective conductors inside the same cable. So we're going to use a factor of 1.2. Okay, fine. So let's put this into our calculation now. So our R1 plus R2 value for the lighting circuit is going to be equal to 36.2 multiplied by 45 meters multiplied by 1.2, which is the worst case scenario, maximum operating temperature derating factor for this circuit. And we're going to divide all that by a thousand and that's going to give us a value of 1.95 ohms. Okay, perfect. So for both circuits, we've calculated our R1, R2 value. Um, and that's it, that's it for this stage. We've gone for the worst case scenario. Obviously bear in mind that you can also work out what it's gonna be at the ambient temperature. And all you'd have to do is, for example, on this, if you see that 25 degrees, the correction factor is 1.02. Now you're thinking, how do I work out what 30 degrees would be? Let's just box this off here and do this quickly here. So we're thinking, what would it be at 30 degrees? What would it be? We've got 25 degrees at 1.02, 20 degrees at 1.0, 15 degrees at 0.98. We can notice, can't we, as this jumps up, it's going up by 0.02, isn't it? So all we can do, if we want to know what 30 degrees is, and these are going up in five degree increments. So for each five degree increment on here, this is jumping up 0.02. So if that's the case, we can just get this value, 1.02, and we can add on 0.02, and that's going to give us 1.04, and that 1.04 would be our um, ambient temperature multiplier for 30 degrees. Okay. So you can apply that all over. If you want to go into even more detail about how I got this 0.02, if you read on here, the correction factor is given by 1 degree equals 0.004 ambient temperature. So if you look on the table, you can clearly see, can't you, they go up 0.02. So if you want a 5 degree increment on this side, it's going to be 0.02 added to this side. Fairly simple. So you can try that if you want, but I'd always advise going for the maximum operating temperature and referencing where you got these bits from in these tables. So let's move on to the next step.